In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create a coat of arms using free clip art that you receive with your software and utilizing one of our level features called Mirror Mode. I've always really been interested in coat of arms. Some of them are really, really complicated and some of them are really, really basic, but they all tell a story. And we thought that it would be a great exercise to use some of our free clip art that we give you with your Vectric software to create your own coat of arms, something that you could actually use and customize. Now, one of the great things about this whole process is you're going to learn how to use some of the really unique tools that our software has to offer. So let's get right into this. Okay, let's create a new file. And this is going to be a single sided job. The width is going to be seven inches and the height is going to be eight inches. And we're going to be cutting this into a three quarter inch piece of material. We're going to be zeroing off the material surface and our datum is going to be set to the center. And we are going to be sure to choose a very high modeling resolution because we're going to be using 3D content for this. So it's always best to use the best resolution that you have. And we're going to click OK. Now with most coat of arms, there's usually a center shield, uh, a ribbon, and a helmet on the top. So let's start out with those elements. Let's go to our modeling tab. And to prepare for this, we may as well just go ahead and rename our level one to center. So to do that, we're gonna select the level, then we're gonna right click on that and go down to rename the level and we're gonna call this center. Now we get some great heraldry clip art for free with our software. So let's just go ahead to our clip art tab. And under our clip art, we've got all kinds of different pieces of clip art that we can use uh, or make use of. And if you just have the clip art word selected, you're going to see your entire collection here. Um, but we want to actually narrow that down to be panels and shields. So we're going to click that. And we're going to take a look through this list of panels and shields. And this is the one we're going to use right here. So let's double click on that and it will automatically put it in the center of our job. Now to make our layout a little bit easier, it would be good if we could see the 2D view and the 3D view at the same time. So let's just go ahead and tile that left and right. So on our left hand side, we have our 2D view and on the right hand side, we have our 3D view. And because we just brought this clip art in, then uh, it's already selected and our sizing handles are showing. So let's just go ahead and hover over top of that corner one, hold down our shift key and then left click and hold down our left mouse button and we can size that down. And we want it to be around uh, a little bit smaller than that. Right about there, that looks pretty good. Now the next bit of clip art we're gonna need is a ribbon for the bottom or a banner. And typically you'd put somebody's last name or engrave some text on that. So in our ribbons and banners, where we have three of them here, and the first one is the one that I think is gonna be best suited for this job. Double click on that. Again, it gets centered right in the middle of our job space with our sizing handle showing. If we hold down our shift key again and grab that upper right corner, we'll size it down to be approximately the width that we want it to be. That looks pretty nice. And if we grab the center handle and hold down our alt key, we can move it straight up to the top of our shield and we can place it right about there. And looking at it in the 3D view, I don't think that's exactly what we want. So let's move it to the bottom and see if that helps. So doing the same thing, left clicking, holding down my alt key and dragging the ribbon to the bottom. That looks better, but I think that if we flipped it from bottom to top, that would be a better option for us. So to do that, we're going to use the quick key V, which is flip vertically. So if we have with, with the ribbon selected, we can press V on the keyboard and it will flip it for us. Again, hold down our alt key and we're going to drag this ribbon up into place. Somewhere's around there. I want it to kind of be touching the sides of my shield, but not really into it too much and covering up a bit of the bottom. I think that looks pretty good to start with. We can move these around a bit later once we get all of our elements in there. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with that. Now for the top of ours, we are going to use a helmet with some feathers on the top. So in objects and people, if we look down through that, we're going to find a helmet with plumes. Let's double click on that. And to get the ratio kind of right, and I'm kind of guessing at this, we're actually going to scale this down 
holding in the shift key. So it fits approximately inside of our the top of our shield. And, and that's pretty good right there, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did before. Hold down our Alt key, left click on the center and hold that and drag it to the top and just set him on top of the shield. And that looks pretty good. Now in the 2D view, everything looks great. But in the 3D view, we're going to notice that the center plume is actually off the top of our job space. So that's not a good thing. But I'm happy with the size of it. So we're going to hold down our shift key and select all of our components. And then we are going to click one more time and holding down the alt key and left clicking and holding on the center. We're going to drag that down a little bit to where it needs to be approximately around there somewhere. That looks pretty good. Now that we have the center all laid out, let's start thinking about what we're going to put on the sides of our coat of arms. Typically, there'd be flourishes. So let's see if we can find some flourishes that might work for this job. Uh, let's go to our modeling tab. And now just to keep things kind of organized, we're going to go ahead and put all of our flourishes on it, their own levels. So let's right click on center and go down to insert a new level. So we're presented with a new level. Let's select that and right click on that. And we're going to rename that flourishes. Press enter for that to be accepted. And that looks pretty good. And because it's selected, any of the new clip art content we bring into our job is going to end up on that level. So that's great. And you can tell that because it's bold. So let's go to our clip art and we're going to go to decorative and take a look through here. Now there's all kinds of great heraldic artwork here, but the one we're interested in is actually right here. Flourish repeat number two. So let's double click on that and it'll be brought into our job right in the center as always. In the 2D view, it looks fine, but in the 3D view, it's obviously not quite right. The flourish is being added to all the other components so you can see anything that's underneath it actually showing through it. So if we go to our modeling tab, we can fix that by giving our flourishes level an actual combine mode that's not add. So if we right click on that, we'll change our combine mode to merge. So anything that's put on that level will be merged into the levels underneath it. So any of the, the resulting composite relief of these three components on our center level, um, this will actually get merged into that as you can see in the 3D view. Now let's just go ahead and size this down to be approximately the size that we need. Again, we can mess around with this later, but this is probably pretty close. And we'll just kind of angle that. And what I'm thinking about is the distance between this uh, flourish and the side of the helmet, how it kind of relates to underneath the, the helmet here. I think that looks pretty good for now. Now, on a typical coat of arms, the flourish would be mirrored to the other side. Now we could do that by actually mirroring, copying this flourish over. Um, but every time we made an adjustment to one side, we would have to go and either make the same adjustment to the other side, or we would need to delete the, the other side and then re-mirror our clip art over. Well, there's actually a property of our levels that we can use to do this for us, and it's called mirror mode. So if we go over to our flourishes level. If we right click when we're on top of that, you'll see mirror mode. In mirror mode, when you select that, you're presented with a whole bunch of different options. So right now it's set to no mirroring. So we just see the way it is. And if we chose left or right or any of these options, what our software does, it sets up a virtual mirror, either through the center of your job, top to bottom, left to right, or will mirror your quadrants from left to right, top to bottom. So what we'll do is we're going to just going to play around with this for a bit and we're going to take a look at left or right to start with. So let's just go ahead and click that. And you'll see that instantly nothing happens in our 2D view, but in our 3D view, we have a copy or a mirrored copy of our um, flourish on the left. Now, much like when you look in a mirror, you don't actually create another version of you. So you don't see that in the 2D view. You only see it in the 3D view. So any changes that I make, it's instantly updated on the mirrored copy. And in this case, it's left to right. Now, just for fun, we're going to hide our center level by turning it off. 
And that way we can take a look and we can explore all the different options that we have here. Let's right click on flourishes again, go to mirror mode, and we're going to try top to bottom. So now we're mirroring across the center, top to bottom, which looks great. If we right click on that and go to mirror mode and go back to left to right. It makes sense that it only mirrors the part that's in on the left hand side of the mirror. So if we go ahead and move our component past the center line, the result is something very unique in our 3D view. Unique and very powerful in that you can go ahead and change one piece of clip art into literally thousands of different variants of it by using this mirror mode. And you can come up with some pretty unique looking flourishes in the end by just using that one flourish that looks pretty neat. It even becomes more powerful when you use the quadrant mirror. So let's go top left quadrant. So you'll see that now we're mirroring anything that's in this view to all of the other three views. So if we put this down here, you'll see that we can come up with some really nice unique designs. And it's automatically updated whenever we change this one component. So you can have some pretty neat stuff in the end. So for now, let's just go back and set that mirror mode to left to right. Let's turn back on our center level and let's put this flourish back where it was so we can continue with our layout. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe we'll rotate it a bit more. And with the mirror mode on, it makes it really easy to, to get everything all working perfectly. That's great. Now what I'd like to have is a copy of this flourish on the bottom. And the easiest way to do that is to actually go ahead and drag that, select it and drag it. But while I do that, hold down my control key. When I have my control key held down, it'll actually make a copy of that component. So as soon as I let go of everything, I have a nice copy down here. I want to put this in the bottom, but I also want to go ahead and mirror this from left to right. So I'm just going to press my H key on my keyboard. That doesn't adjust my mirror mode any, that just mirrors this component, that's all. Flips it over for me. Rotate this around, and I'm going to tuck it underneath my ribbon. And we're just going to play around with it a little bit until I get it where I want it to be. Maybe somewhere around there. Let's just select our ribbon, and using our cursor keys, we'll just nudge it up a little bit. Looks pretty nice. Actually, let's put that back where it was. I think I really want to nudge down my flourish here. Maybe one more. Let me rotate it just a little bit more. Now you can imagine if I had to do all of those changes to the other component on the other side, or um, delete it and then re-mirror it over, it would have taken forever along with, uh, it would have been hard to visualize what was actually happening on the other side or, or on the opposite side of my mirror. Um, and so this makes it a lot easier. I think that looks really good right there. I'm very happy with that. Now for our next thing we want to do is we have this space in here that we need to go and add in some more flourishes. Now, because I actually want to do a quadrant mirror on this, I can't put those components on this same level. Now, if you happen to forget what the mirror mode is set to, obviously you can look in the 2D view and you probably can figure that out. But if not, we indicate it on the level icon. So you'll see that on our center level, we have just an add level with no red line through it. So there's no mirroring happening. Up here we have a red line, red line down the center so that indicates that we're mirroring across our job, either left to right or right to left, and it's blue so it's set to merge. Now when we create our next level we're going to use the quadrant runner. Let's take a look and see what our icon looks like when we do that. So let's right click on flourishes, insert in a new level. We're going to go ahead and hover over top of that level. Let's rename that side flourishes. Click to accept that, right click on that, we're going to change our combine mode to merge, and then we're going to right click on that and set our mirror mode to top left quadrant. So it's going to mirror anything that we put 
on this level, that's in this quadrant, to all three of the other quadrants. So let's take a look in our clip art. And in the same decorative folder, we're going to take a look for the piece that I need, which is right here, Flourish number 22. So we're going to double click on that. And then we're going to rotate that around. And if I hold down my Alt key while I'm rotating it, it will lock it into different um, angles for me. So I can get it nice and straight at 90 degrees. Let's just go ahead and scale that down. And then we're going to slide it over here and we're going to see what the result is in our 3D view. And oh, I think that's going to look really sharp. We may actually want to go ahead and scale it up a little. Slide it up in there a little bit. You know, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to use my cursor keys just to nudge that down a little bit and over so it fits in right. Yeah, I'm really quite happy with that. Let's see what we get if we nudge it up a little. No, I liked it just where it was. I'm pretty happy with that right there. That looks great. I'm very happy with that. Now, in the everything looks fine in the 2D view. Everything lines up nicely. In the 3D view, though, there's some things that aren't quite right. For instance, our helmet is kind of merging into our shield kind of in a different way. We've got different bits of our flourishes peeking out from here and there. So we need to go ahead go and adjust our components in the 3d view to make sure everything looks okay so let's go to our modeling tab just to make sure everything looks good there everything's great let's maximize our 3d view everything looks fine here too we're just going to go ahead and start with our shield so if we click that and bring up our sizing handles we can click the little blue button at the bottom and bring up our 3d properties dialog and we can go ahead and change this to be a quarter inch and let's just see what that gives us. That looks okay, but let's add a little bit of base height, 0.5 to that, that looks great. Let's just go ahead and change our helmet to be a quarter inch. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of a base height of 0.1. Uh, maybe we're not gonna do that, 0.05 less than that there we go. that looks pretty good we wanted the the helmet to kind of go over top of the shield a bit and it looks like it's kind of just sort of sitting on top of it and i think that does the perfect perfect job now let's just go ahead and we're going to take this flourish and we're going to nudge it up a little bit i think that looks okay Sometimes a little happy mistake, like where these merge together, that little piece there, which belongs to this, this component here, it looks okay there. I think it looks rather nice there. So I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna work too hard to get rid of that. That all looks good. The only thing we might do is just change our banner a bit so that it actually is riding on top of our shield. So let's change that to be a quarter inch. I think that looks pretty good. Now as a final test, what we'll do is we're going to rotate this on its edge and make sure everything looks fine from the side. I like that, that the, the face of my shield is the proudest point. That looks great. So if I want to V-carve anything on there, I can. If I want to add text to my banner, I can. And everything looks really, really good. So we've gone through all kinds of different things, but the main topic here was using the clip art that you get with your software and using some of our level features, especially the feature called mirror mode to create a nice layout with mirrored elements. I hope you found this video helpful. Now it's your turn to go out there and create your own coat of arms.